now we are exploring meditations three. Uh, we finally know something is true. And what's that? The fact that I exist. I think therefore I am. That was established in meditations two. In meditations three, he's, he's thinking about how, okay, now that I know I exist, how can I explore other aspects of my fundamental reality? So for example, is there a God? Does God exist? And so he says, okay, well, let me backtrack and think about who I am and what it means to be me, what it means to be I. So we know that he conceives of himself as a rational animal and Descartes then thinks about, well, what does it even mean to think, right? What does it mean to be a thinking thing? He says, I know I'm a thinking thing, but what does that even mean? Then he gives a lot of examples of, well, that means I, to think means I'm understanding, I'm affirming, I'm denying, I am analyzing, I am rationalizing things. Those, these are the parts of what it means to be a thinking thing, right? This is what we do when we're thinking and we're judging and we're kind of assessing our situation, whether we walk into a room and we're assessing the room or we are trying to understand complex calculus problems. So this is what it means to be a thinking thing, right? We do a wide variety of tasks because we are thinking things, but it's still, we don't really know that much about who we are but at this point, Descartes says, I'm a thinking thing. And what are my thoughts about, right? What are your thoughts about? Well, Descartes' thoughts are about God. So God. So Descartes basically says, I have this idea of God in my head. I have this notion of God being this infinite, omnipotent, omniscient creature, meaning that God is all-knowing and everywhere and all-perfect. So he backtracks upon the assumption that he made in meditation one saying that God is an evil genius. <laughs> he says, you know what? That was a, a problematic assumption. I don't really have any proof for this assumption. So I'm going to throw it away because I do know that something is true. And he's distinguishing between what he thinks from his mind versus what he senses from his body. And so remember, what he senses from his body, he's not trusting. He's being very skeptical of. But what he thinks in his mind, he's giving a little, a little bit more, more priority. So with the whole God situation, he has this idea of God that comes from his mind. The idea that, as I mentioned, God is perfect and infinite and omnipotent and omniscient, right? All these kind of good positive qualities that we tend to have about God. Think about your perception of God. Think about how most religions conceive of God. We tend to think of God as being this all-knowing, omnipresent being who is perfect and can't make mistakes and has created human beings kind of in the image of God. And so Descartes says, with this notion of God being perfect in his mind, he then thinks, well, where did this idea come from in the first place? Where did this idea of God being perfect and infinite even come from? And he says that there must be an origin for this idea. Where did, Something can't come from nothing. Where did this idea come from? So someone could say, well, you could just be hypothesizing about God's existence and conceiving of God through what you aren't. So you, as a human being, are imperfect and you're finite and you're limited and you make mistakes all the time, right? And so someone could say, well, you are just ascribing the opposite qualities to God. You are just saying, well, since I'm a human and I'm imperfect, then God must be perfect. God must be everything I'm not. But Descartes said, if we are finite, imperfect creatures, how could we conceive of something that is perfect and infinite without having those qualities ourselves, right? Wouldn't it be impossible to be able to understand what is perfect and infinite without that being existing in the first place and we don't have those qualities? So this is kind of this ontological argument, Descartes' ontological argument for God's existence. His notion of God, his idea of God must come from God itself. And more specifically, this idea that God is perfect and that God is infinite must come from God itself because we don't have the ability to conceive of it. And so that assumption about God being an evil genius in Meditations 1, he says, is not true because that would mean there's something bad about God, that God is deceptive. And so if God is perfect, which is a fundamental idea he has in his mind, then being deceptive would be some sign of imperfection, which doesn't make sense, which wouldn't go along with his idea of God. 
So therefore, God is not an evil genius because God is perfect. And being an evil deceiver is a sign of imperfection. So at this point, we know two things. We know that I think, therefore I am, right? I exist based off of the fact that I'm thinking about my existence. And now we know something else. We know that God exists, or at least Descartes believes he knows that God exists. So his argument for God's existence has to do with his own existence. The fact that he is able to conceive in his mind of this being that is so different from him. And the being himself or the being itself must have implanted this idea within his mind. So God created this idea of God within Descartes' mind. And therefore, we as human beings must have been created in God's image. But of course, we have all of these limitations. So we know that God exists. And so this is a conclusion of his third meditation. Because throughout meditations four, five, and six, Descartes continues to explain and rationalize God's existence and how it's connected to other things that we know. But everything that we know as human beings for Descartes is built off of these two fundamental truths. I think, therefore I am, and God exists and is a perfect infinite being. So these are the two things that we know so far and all of our knowledge will be built upon these two truths.